Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and we're here for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. <laughs> and today we're going to continue our talk about some things that can be done to relieve fascial restrictions in the body of you or your animal, your horse, your dog, your cat, or bunny. <laughs> and I want to just remind people what fascia is. It is a type of tissue that runs throughout the body. It surrounds, protects, and supports everything in the body. Many tissues and organs are made up of little bundles surrounded by fascia, and those bundles are surrounded by more fascia, and continuing until you have a heart, which is then surrounded by more fascia, for example. And fascia, remember, transmits electrical impulses faster than anything else in the body, including nerves. So when you have pain in your fascia, it's going to be far-reaching and sometimes difficult to diagnose the uh, cause of it because it does spread throughout the body so quickly. So we have been talking about several methods to relieve tension in the fascia based on that principle that a light force for a long period of time is the best thing to do to realign the fibers of fascia. And we have talked about how fascia is like chewing gum stuck in your hair and you do that little force over a long time and it gets the chewing gum stretched out and lined up so that the fibers are going in the same direction as the fibers around them, which creates more function, more mobility, um, less pain, and just an overall better balance in the body. So today we're going to talk about a very broad subject of a way to relieve fascia and that is massage. And of course massage encompasses a million techniques. There are so many types of massage and nearly um, every massage practitioner has a variety of tools at their uh, beck and call for relieving fascial tension and restriction. And Swedish massage is a kind of a deep massage and that goes in a more direct technique than what we've been talking about and really just um, pushes on the area and stretches the area, um, almost causes an inflammation in the area and then information is given to realign those fibers with a more light technique like effleurage. And there also are other types of massage where you um, push into the muscle up the body. Well, I can do it on him. Push into the muscle going down the body until you get to a spot where there's a restriction. You push in slightly and then continue pushing and hold it. And that's something that we've talked about before, those fulcrums holding um, the tissue, allowing it to unravel like with the old telephone cords. And as we talked about with myofascial release and craniosacral therapy, and also some types of massage employ the same technique. And I can feel Tristan just sort of melting and sliding down my lap as I'm relieving this tension he has at his lumbosacral junction back here with this kind of massage. So you just keep pushing in, following the tissue, and then as it releases, you just keep pushing until you come to the end of the barrier. And when you push, there's no more restriction. Now, for me to show the end of that, we'd be sitting here at least 10 minutes because Tristan's definitely got a little muscle problem here from falling up the steps in the ice and snow the other day. The poor little guy, he just completely lost all impulsion to go up those four steps out back and he just hung there by his front legs. So he had a bit of a workout he didn't plan on that morning. So that's one technique in massage that you can use to relieve fascia. And there are so many others um, and you know many people have different types of effleurage which is kind of a light um, soothing touch and some of those types of effleurage can include um, myofascial work um, and one of the other things that massage therapists do is go to where there is a restriction in a muscle and relieve the tension around that muscle and then do fascial work with the tissue around that muscle so that the muscle, once flattened out and no more knotted up, um, can be uh, maintain that new alignment that the massage therapist has uh, 
given the muscle the information for. If the fascia around it's tight, as soon as you're done relieving the muscle tension, it's gonna snap back up into a ball. So it's really important to follow up with some of the techniques to relieve the fascia and the other tissue around the muscles. Now, what does this have to do with our dogs and horses? We are so fortunate to live in a time when there are many people trained in massage therapy for horses. And certainly there are several schools across the country now, some even online courses, to learn about massage for dogs and small animals. Um, I'm lucky that there is one right near Boston, Bancroft School of Massage. They have a sister school in Colorado where my friend Tracy Vroom is. Hi, Tracy. And they train people to do massage on horses and pets. And that is a great thing because now there are more and more of them around. Some of them work out of vets offices. Some of them um, work at pet physical therapy facilities. And some of them just travel around and go to pets' houses or have the pets come to them. And they do um, a variety of things, including massage and possibly Reiki and possibly acupressure and some of the other techniques they learn at pet massage school. So it's not too hard to find someone to do massage with your pet. And if you've never explored that and you have a senior dog or an agility dog or a dog that you use for tracking and really um, rigorous sport, even just hiking with you if you're a big hiker, snowshoer, mountain climber, <laughs> um, it's really important to keep your dog feeling comfortable and functional. And so massage therapists can be a huge help for your pet's health. And I really encourage you to look around and see if there are any in your area. And if you would like a side career, consider going to one of these massage schools. A lot of them are set up for people and as a second career. So you come into town for a week or on a weekend and gradually learn um, the techniques. There are many that you can do online. I don't necessarily recommend them because like so much of the work I teach, it's hands-on work. If somebody can't evaluate your technique with your hands, it's really hard to know how good you're gonna be. Now, I have a lot of experience. I've done massage on lots of animals and people in my day, and I did do an online course for one of my massage certifications, but it was just sort of more of the same of what I had learned in a live course for another type of animal that I work with. So, you know, there are some benefits to having those online classes available for people, and you know, there are some that are better than others, so do check them out. And it can be really um, useful work for, as I said, senior dogs and performance dogs, and certainly for horses, there are many more uh, equine massage therapists around than there used to be. And many people, part of their routine with their horse is to have a massage therapist come in once a month or every six weeks or during the show season or before the show season and maybe during the season and then kind of wrap things up in the winter unless there are any potential injuries in the pasture. So there are many ways to budget an equine massage therapist into the schedule of your life with your horse. And massage is another great way to break up fascial restrictions in the body, which as I said, can really inhibit performance and balance, and that can translate to behavior. Um, I was watching a program yesterday, recorded maybe two years ago, and there's a lot of horses in it, people were riding the horses, and one of the horses was quite lame in his hind right leg, and every once in a while he'd even do the head bob, and they did, it's a very horse-oriented program, and they did such a skillful job of trying to hide his lameness, but it was clear that he had some restrictions going on up in his hip and pelvis. And certainly, um, he, with him being a star movie horse, um, I'm sure he saw a massage therapist to kind of relieve some of those restrictions um, because he does frequently appear on this show. So anyway, it's really an important part of our animal's health and our own health to try to keep our fascia moving. Um, part of what we appreciate and love about our animals is that graceful, joyful movement they have when their fascia and their bodies are performing well and with maximum fluidity. So little Tristan's all better today. That means that he had a bit of a digestive upset from something his mummy fed him, which was on second thought, not a very good idea. But he's back to his usual self. We played squeakies and glad to say my dog has recovered. Um, but I think that at some point down the line here, we will have some talks about um, what to do when your own animal is under the weather. What is the point where you take him to the vet 
and what kinds of things can you do to explore what might be going on with your dog so that you can better care for him when he's not up to snuff. So we'll look at that um, later or down the line. And we will have a little vacation from conversations with a corgi for a couple of days because I will be at my job as an educator on Monday and Tuesday. So we will be back on Wednesday. We're gonna look continuing at some techniques to work with fascia to bring about maximum function for you and your pet. So thanks for joining us today. Everybody have a great day watching the Olympics. We have got nothing but gloom and rainy weather here, which is making me happy because it's warm and it's melting the snow and the ice. That last ice storm really just left things in such a mess. So the rain is very welcome because nothing melts ice and snow better than rain. So we're pretty happy about that. And uh, the stream hasn't come up yet, but I've already got the basement on standby for potential water infestation. <laughs> so we will see you guys in a couple days. Thanks for joining us. And look in your area for someone that might do pet massage or consider it yourself as something you might do. And plenty of people take these classes just to work with their own dogs if they're breeders or showers and they want their dog to be at his tip-top performance level. Certainly, uh, casual pet massage can be a part of your everyday time with your pet. Lots of people I know spend time on the sofa massaging their dog every evening. Right, Tristan? You get a little massage. Shoulders and feet. That's what he likes. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Everybody have a great day and enjoy some TV time. It's, the weather is... Uh, such that watching TV with the Olympics is actually a really fun thing to do today. Thanks for joining us.